the Antichrist for a minute as well. I'm going to finish this up. But <clears throat> a few other things I just want to make clear that we have identified, you know, um, the enemy. Have we identified the enemy when we come together? <laughs> okay, we can't have no misfire. Amen. Uh, friendly fire. I mean, is it really friendly? Yeah. Uh, Y'all have identified the enemy. We know his assignment, right? So how do you know his assignment and you don't know yours? You know his assignment, but you don't know yours. How is that possible? Okay. I mean, we got believers. You got to know. If I don't know my assignment, I'm not going to be where I need to be. Okay, you, you got here, that's great. But you still have an assignment here. Right? It's, it's eternal. Uh, okay. And a son stays in the house forever. But a servant, he leaves. But a, house, but a, 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 a son, he resides forever. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I keep getting, <laughs> I'm going to have to do this teaching on the goat and the sheep because we need to know. Oh, are you goat or are you sheep? Okay. Sheep follow. Okay. All right. <laughs> we need to know who Satan is. Before I go, we we, we talking about the Antichrist, but that's all. We, we, that was the spirit. We won't get into that, but I just want to make sure we got a few little things straight with Satan, who he is. All right, because you got people who believe and say, oh, he said, he's not really, you know, he, he, he's just an evil. He's, he's just evil. It's just a representation of evil. I'm talking about believers. I'm going to show you all something today. The Bible says, or shall I say, the Bible never calls Satan an it. It never calls him an it. So y'all need to stop saying, you know, something told me. Y'all need to say it's Holy Spirit, that if you're filled with the Spirit, it should be Holy Spirit telling you. Yeah. Uh, not an it or something. <laughs> I think that's my wife. I mean, <laughs> we live together. We've been. <laughs> I think that's her. No, I know that's her. And I know her name. And she know mine. All right, so stop saying something told me. If you feel it with the Spirit, if that's the case, then it's the Spirit. It might be the Holy Spirit or it just might be your Spirit, but it's not something. Okay? All right. How many of y'all say that all the time? Something told me this. Something, I felt something that said this. Y'all know, you don't lie. Come on, yeah, you do. All right, so now you don't have to say that. Be specific. I know that's God. I know he lived with me. I know his voice. All right, somebody live with you, you don't know their voice? Okay. All right. I feel like I can move through here today. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, the Bible never says, it never calls him an it, okay? You need to establish that he's real. You need to establish the warfare that you're in is real. It's real. OK, the Bible says that he has a mind. It says he has a will and he has a heart. Mm, that sounds like a personality to me. Mm -hmm. OK. All right. It talks about he has feelings. He has thoughts. He has motives. Satan is not just a name for evil. He's a person with a heart that feels, a mind that thinks, and a will that acts. Would y'all agree? Yeah. Mm. 
God holds him morally, listen to this, morally responsible for what he does. Hmm. And you cannot hold less than a person morally responsible. So he's a person that wants your body. Or should I say, he wants the body and your body. Yeah? yeah? All right. So that's just some things that it's going to help you in understanding your adversary. Okay? He has names. Lucifer, Beelzebub, Baal, Satan, Abaddon. The Bible calls him, listen, also calls him the lion. It calls him the dragon and the snake. The lion, the dragon, the snake. Sound like a movie. <laughs> what would you like to be in a room with all three of them? Well, the minute you begin to pray in the name of Jesus, you're in that room with the lion, the dragon. And the snake. He's here right now. <laughs> yeah. I need y'all to know that. See, just like if 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 we were part of another country, you know, we, you know, Austria, and they were at war, and you was a citizen of Austria, by your affiliation, because you are a citizen of that, you would actually be in war against whoever country they were in war against. So there's a war against the kingdom of darkness and light. So whether you haven't been affected, you don't think so, I'm just sliding by, you're in a war. Because your kingdom is at war. I mean, your prayers. Do you realize when, you, when we pray tonight that your prayers... They are sin through the second heaven to the third heaven. I just need y'all to think about that just for a second. He is the principality, listen, principality of the air. So any air between earth and heaven is his air. So your prayers, see, this is how you got to understand how powerful your prayers are. The least person in here think that their prayers won't be answered. That prayer sends through the second heaven, the domain of the principality, the fallen ones. Who are you? What is man? That you don't understand prayer when it comes to prayer, the power that it has. I guess we just don't understand the second heaven. <laughs> that he's the, he's, God is ever interceding for us. He takes that prayer and makes sure that it gets to the Father. We prayed for this young lady 20 years ago. I was there when she adopted her child. See, sometimes we rebel because we don't know how to be loved. And her daughter was born Gracie, changed her name. But the minute, see, me and I, we prayed 20 years ago, we prayed. See, but we, we think that prayer didn't come to pass. Oh, yes, it did. The minute I prayed, he heard the prayer. Just like in the, okay. But there's a principality holding up the prayer, Persia. Why is it any different? The question is, who is she? The question is, 
Who's on my son Najee? What's on his life? What's on my daughter Gab? What's on their life? What's on my son D life? What's on his life? What's going on? What's, the, what's, the, what's holding up? Hmm? What's holding up Keisha and Ryan's baby? Huh? What's, what's, on, what's on that baby's life? Baby's life. What's on their lives? That the enemy, that he will come because we know the will of God. But why would he hinder this? What is, what are they carrying? Huh? See, but we don't look at it like that. See, but you got to go in the spirit realm. You can't be, you know, putting your faith in doctors. I put my faith in God. He said that my seed would be mighty in the earth. See, you got to talk back to Satan like that. Then you just got to have that agreement. Can I, can I just get some agreement? Can I just get some agreement with that? I said the anointing comes by association. Well, let me just surround myself with some mothers. Let me just surround myself with some fathers. Hey, I need to do this because I need to change my association. Because the anointing comes by what? Association. But it grows by what? Desperation. Are you desperate enough? Glory to God. Woo! My goodness. Grows by that. Who is Saul? Who is that? He's been amongst the prophets. Don't even look like him. Y'all should be walking by Keisha and Ryan and being like this. Eh? You should be like, you know, just say, you know, real quick, how many months are you? <laughs> Y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all got the names yet? But, but you got to want it for them. Yes, Don't just be saying it because I said say it. It got to be real in your heart. That's right. Might as well say nothing. Jesus. See, this is, oh, I'm going to get this. See, this is what I'm saying, man. Hmm. If I can get to, I'm going to get to it. This is how we supposed to be. You see her need. You don't have to just be pulling her uh, to every corner or riding them every corner. Pray for them. Yeah. Turn on a plate. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, I'm telling you. Brian, I, I'll be speaking to it. I'll be telling that wound, you're going to conceive the word of God. Ah, Jesus. I mean, I would be saying that thing. Woo, man. Oh, one of these days, she's going to be like, oh, it's already there. I feel that. Thing. So just wake up out of the bed, just walk around. Y'all know how y'all women do. She's going to look on and say, man of God. <laughs> See, this is how we're supposed to be. Okay. All right. I'm going to help us with that. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Woo! All right. All right. All right. Woo-hoo. He said in itself. Come to pass. My God. See, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, I mean, I see people on the internet, all they're talking about is riches. We're talking about life. We're talking about life. Talking about, see, 
The Bible, that's the real riches in heaven. It's your family, your children. I'm so tired of it. My faith with God. If you trust God and you're obedient to God, you won't have to worry about it. You already know you're blessed. But we're talking about a life here. We sitting in church, everybody, bless me, bless me. I need a man of God come and bless me. You're making a mockery because, first of all, you don't give to the kingdom. And you want to return from the kingdom, but you won't give to the kingdom. Now, this is the area where we need to be and repentant. This is a state, y'all, that we are to function in and allow for each other. Shortcomings. Y'all just need to go by here and say life. I'm sorry, I can't get away, but this is where I am. So, All right. Life. My Lord. Be life and death. See, I know where they are. They are ready. They have prepared. Okay. Here we go. When you start to pray, I've told you, you invite them in. There's another question people say, why, 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 did, why did God create Satan then if he knew he was going to go? Mm. Pull the wrong end. Mm. Same reason he created you. Because right. he loves you. And he loved Satan. Same reason. Why did he create that? He didn't create evil. But I'm going to show y'all with some things here, though. Same reason. Why did he go that way? The same reason we go that way. Same reason. You know what he wanted? He wanted something for himself. Rather than for God. You know how you do. You, you know how you do. You won't. Okay. Mm -mm. He wanted to say mine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what it said. He wanted to change one word in that prayer from mine. You know, no, no, he wanted to say mine instead of thine. If he could have just did that. And that's what Jesus would have did if he had bowed down. I already own the kingdoms of this world. But I need you to decree that. Oh, okay. So y'all missing it. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. He wanted to change that to my kingdom, my glory, my power forever and ever. Amen. So be it. That's what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He wanted to change that to mine instead of thine. So guess what, teacher? That is the actual origin of rebellion. That is the actual origin of the rebellion. Mine. Anytime you take from God and put it to you, that's rebellion. You know, like your life that he gave you, that you refuse to give back to him when you come to him. You can't come to him and don't give it back to him. In other words, you haven't came to him. 
if you can't give it back to him. Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now listen to that. That's the origin of rebellion, which is pride that turns into sin, which leads you, listen, it leads you to hatred, and hatred leads you to destructive or destructiveness. And now you won't, listen, now you won't, you want to break down instead of to build up. Jesus said that Satan was not only the ruler and prince of this world, but he was the God of this world. Little G. But he is the God of this world. That's in, you know, um, Second Corinthians 4.4. 4. We don't have time to go there tonight. Listen, the only other person besides his heavenly father to whom Jesus ever applied the word God to was Satan. Mm, he called him that. The God of this world. I told you, he's behind all the governments. He's behind the media. He's behind the stock market. He rules and reigns in every Every, if you want to call them seven mountains, everything, entertainment, he rules and all of those. He controls man. He's the God of this world system, of this world system. And he uses people. I don't care if it's the Illuminati. I don't care if it's the Scottish Rite. I don't care if it's the Saints of Malta. It's all of them. He runs all of them. Not man, but the God of this world runs them. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Let's see here. Most people in the world, and he's not, he don't mind you praying. He don't mind all these (laughs) religions praying. He just don't want you to pray in Jesus' name. He don't mind the Buddhist prayer. Oh, go ahead, pray. Go ahead. It's me anyway, he's saying. Jesus is saying, it's me anyway. Not Jesus, but uh, Satan is saying, it's me anyway. Go ahead. You can get all those things. He just don't want you praying in Jesus' name. Okay, listen to this. Whether people know it or not, behind so much religion and so much activity, people don't really realize that they are actually worshiping Satan. They don't realize it. Because it's in the name of religion. Just think about it. You got, what is it, two billion Christians? Is it, I think that's the last thing, something like that. Anybody know? Yeah? Okay. Okay, but in, in that two billion, that, what is it? Is it Catholicism? It's, it's, it's so many. So is it, well, how many are actually? Actually believers. That's a very small number. So other than that, then the whole world is worshiping Hasatan. Okay, they don't want to hear this one. I mean, you have people in churches. Feel. Yeah, fill with church. Fill, fill. Fill with people that claim that they're worshiping the true God. Yeah. See, I get people mad because, you know, here at Walker Ministry, we, we definitely, see, I, I think you should know the truth. That's going to get into the other little thing I 
I want to minister to, and I'm going to have a little time to get it. But I think we should know the truth. Yeah. How are you going to be doing this thing and you don't know what the truth is? Okay. This is how they get us. This is how they get us, too. Okay. Go to Matthew. Oh, Minister's not here tonight. Okay. Go to Matthew. He got his brother in his stead. That's what I'm talking about. Like that. Go to Matthew. I want you to go King James. Okay. You ready? Go to Matthew 6, 9, 13. Just want to see something. Let me show you a little something. Are you ready? I guess we are. This is Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 9. Pray therefore like this. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed, kept holy be your name. Okay. Go ahead. Your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Come on. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory of forever and ever. I told you that's what he wanted to say, right? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's too broad. (laughs) But deliver us from evil. Can we be a little more specific? Hit the amplified right there. Same, Same verse, 13. Read it. This is verse 13. And lead, bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. From the evil one. Deliver us from evil. It's not specific. But deliver us from the evil one. Pinpoints who we are talking about. No, y'all just keep reading it to give us some, leave us some evil. No, the true translation is the evil one. Now, you know who you're talking about. Just evil? No, the evil one. The one that causes evil. Just deliver us from evil. Just let me go to the store. Which store? I just want to eat some fruit. Which fruit? See there? But it's the evil one. Y'all know y'all ain't seen that. The two books that Satan hates most out of all the canon of scripture. Two. I'm going to tell you the two. It's not Zephaniah, but hold on. It's Genesis and Revelation. But why? Genesis describes, listen, his devices. Revelation describes his destruction. I hate them too. But I hate Genesis the most. Because I'm trying to get you not to believe Genesis 3. That's where the deception came in. If I can just guard Genesis. Genesis is the one that's mostly debated creation and evolution. Right. Is because I, want to, I don't want you to believe that I exist. Yes. So let's cloud Genesis with all kind of things. Flat earth and all these types of things. <laughs> Hollow earth theory. All these types of things. So anything to not let you see the root of the word, what it really says. He wants to write out that this is where he got Eve deceived at Genesis 3. 
I can just wipe that out. Yeah, y'all. Mm-mm. Man. Let's just let y'all know some few things before we go in. That's like kind of the, the plan to know your enemy. Yeah? Y'all good on that? Okay, watch this. All right. You are accountable for the condition of your own heart. There's no one else responsible for your spiritual development. Hello. That's kind of a little side one I want to throw in there to you. You are accountable for the condition of your heart. I told you, your past shouldn't be a reflection of who you are. Right? See, that's why I can just pull y'all out from that. Y'all be all right. It should be reflecting your associations. Okay. Y'all good? You are divine. You, listen, you are responsible for your own spiritual development. Hello? Yeah. Stop putting that in the hands of other people. Hello? Yeah. All right. That's just a little one. Just want to put that on there in case somebody need that one. Yeah? Okay. Minister. Can you go somewhere for me? Huh? You back there? You ready now? I got you. Okay, finger ready. Go to, go to 1 Corinthians 10, 20 through 22 amplified. You're talking about now back on the Antichrist. But we, we really didn't leave him anyway. We were just talking about him. Uh, okay, we were talking about the spirit, but it's, y'all got me, right? Yeah. All right? This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning at verse 20. And it so reads, No, I am suggesting that what the pagans sacrifice, they offer in effect to demons, to evil spiritual powers, mm. and not to God at all. I do not want you to fellowship okay. and be partners with diabolical spirits by eating at their feast. You cannot drink the Lord's cup and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Shall we thus provoke the Lord to jealousy and anger and indignation? Are we stronger than he? That we should defy him. Mm, mm, mm. I, I got people trying to sip. <laughs> I got people trying to sip out of both cups. This is we talk about the Antichrist. He's telling you right now. See, you, you, I just can't get it. I, I just have to go here for a second. Christmas. All right. I have to go here. Mm. All right. See, my job as a pastor, listen, is to prepare you for eternity. See, I mean, I got to say this every service. My job Teacher job and our job is to prepare you for eternity. If you didn't need a teacher, you didn't need a pastor, he wouldn't have gave them as gifts. I've made my election sure. With fear and trembling, I come before you. 
I lay my life down. How can I ever do that if I've never taught you a message on sin and repentance? If I'm actually going to lead you to Shemaiah as my job, as a shepherd, that's what his job is, to lead you someplace. Preferably the gates of heaven. Because you got some that ain't leading people to the, okay. The gates of hell shall not prevail. All right. So we're talking about the spirit of Antichrist. So if you have ministry, they, they never talk of repentance. And they never talk about, you know, um, your sin and your behavior and how you're supposed to live. See, already the spirit of Antichrist is in full effect. I'm going back to Christmas. Don't worry. See, and then, as believers, I mean, really? We should already know we celebrate his life every day yeah. with my life. Oh. That's how I celebrate him every day with my life. It's his life now that lives in me. So it said you can't do what the Pagans do. So you worship. You know, if we were doing this, it's about Christ. So over here, you worshiping, is it about Christ? No. But now you're drinking out of both cups at the table. It's, y'all don't get it? He said you cannot do both. Hold on, go back to that because we, we're missing it. Go back to it. See, this, and believers, like, I thought we were supposed to be, my whole thing with the Antichrist, this one, the third one, it's about truth. Okay? You cannot drink the Lord's cup and the cup of demons. Ownership. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. There are two kingdoms. And you can't partake of both kingdoms. So if the world is doing it, why are you doing it? So if the world is celebrating Christmas, not your Savior. Why are you doing it? Uh, I'm going to say it one more time. If the world is celebrating him, they're calling it Christmas. I don't care what you take it. I don't care if you call it the holiday season. Y'all, look, you just changing the word, but you're celebrating the same thing, just like they did all the gods. Same God that just changed the name according to what nation was in rulership then. So that's what the church is doing. Nobody want to talk about this. See, this ain't popular. I'm not looking to be popular. I'm looking to be right. According to the word of God. Righteous. Oh, oh, you're going to get in there. See, you got to understand. Oh, you're going to get into my thing about the unrighteous works. See, God is not mocked. He know. Then it just got us all bent over about, you know, we just celebrate. We're doing it our way. It's just like Rosh Hashanah. I told you, it's Yom Teruah. Where did the word come from? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I know that's where it came from. Amen. See, what happened is you have other holidays that fall close to the date. Or similar to that date, amen. You should know. Yeah. You, you should know. Amen. See, other than that, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be drinking from the wrong cup. Why, won't, why don't we want the truth? Why we don't want the truth? God, things are... 
His ordinances are forever. I don't want. I, I mean, we got. I mean, think about it. God is trying to get us at this moment. Whether it, it, we're on the wrong calendar or whatever, it, we should always be in uh, a repentive state. Yes. Amen. Yeah. 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 We should always be in a repentive state. But he gives us these, these feasts, these mordings for a reason. Yes. Because he's preparing us for his coming. Right now, where's the church? I'm, I, I cut it on and I'm looking and it's all about things and, and the twisting of his word. And, you know, you're more than a servant now. If he, You know, God takes prosperity in the servant of his Lord, but you're more than a servant now. So how much more? See, it's still about stuff. It does take. It does. In the prosperity of his servants. He, he does. And yes, you are now a friend. And I am blessed because I am obedient. But I don't need to stir something up into you. To make you believe God is good because he give you something. He's good all by himself. He's not a genie you just rub it because... And I use his scripture to say this. No, he good because he's God. And he said, don't store up riches in this. He said, they rust away. But instead of investing in you, those are the riches that you can take with you. Your family, your children. No, we won't do that. Everybody just sitting in the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still ain't repentant. You still rebellious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still want the hand of God on your life, but you don't do anything for him. I'm t- ain't y'all tired of, I'm tired of seeing that? No change, no real change. Let's talk about the anointing to do. Never teach on God's. How can you teach on his grace if I don't teach on sin? How can I do all this teaching on grace and I never teach on sin or repentance? See, I told you everything that's in church is not. And people get they get mad because, you know, you know, you you say these things. Okay. Yeah, how dare you tell the truth? Lie to me. No fear of God. No fear of God. That's why I'm glad the prophets were saying, you got to come out your sin. Hiding it, keeping it undercover, that don't get you in. Then God said, I'm waiting here to reward you. I've already forgiven you of that. So why are you still doing that? Now, I'm trying to get you on your works, what you're supposed to be doing with the word that you heard. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. See, but the Antichrist tells people this. You can drink from both sides of the cup. You can drink from both of them. You can eat at both tables. Matter of fact, bring some friends. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. A lot of pastors are going to have a lot of things to answer to God. I don't think I could sit up here and be telling y'all all these stories and fairy tales and not exposing my own life and how I came, you know, out of sin and what I struggled with. You don't hear these, you don't hear these pro- these prosperity people talking about the sin they came out of, but they struggle with. Maybe some, maybe some. I don't know. 
Okay. Here I go. Here I go, teacher. Today, the first. Okay. <laughs> all day, see this, all day is the first. All day, Pastor. All right. All day, here we go. Hmm. People say, How can a Christian be overcome by the spirit of Antichrist? People ask that. Yeah, they do. I'm going to give you two reasons how. Go to Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2.10. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 at verse 10. And by unlimited seduction to evil and with all wicked deception mm. for those who are perishing, mm. going to perdition because they did not welcome the truth mm. but refused to love it. That they might be saved. Oh my goodness. You see that right there? Look at that. Because they did not welcome, look at that capital, the truth. But refused to love it, mm -hmm. that they might be saved. So if you don't really love the truth, that's right there. This is what happens, teacher. Most Christians, listen, simply endure the truth, but they don't appropriate it to their heart. Most Christians just endure the truth. But it's never appropriated to their heart. Go to James. No, go to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 5, 1 through 3, quickly. This is Jeremiah chapter 5 at verse 1. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now and take notice Seek in her broad squares to see if you can find a man as Abraham sought in Sodom. One who does justice, who seeks truth, sincerity, and faithfulness. And I will pardon Jerusalem for one uncompromisingly righteous person. And though they say, as the Lord lives, surely they swear falsely. Mm. O Lord, do not your eyes look on the truth. They have meant to please you outwardly, but you look on their hearts. You have stricken them, but they have not grieved. You have consumed them, but they have not refused to take correction mm. or instruction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to repent and return to you. My goodness. Mm, mm, mm. God is saying, he said, just find me a man, anybody that has a heart for the truth. This is what he's saying. He said, I'll pardon that one. He's saying, look at what's happening to the people. They say that they love me, that they, listen, that I rule their lives. But he said that they don't receive correction. A person leave a church because you correct them. Excuse me, uh, a person will leave the church because you love them. How many of y'all sitting in here left church because somebody loved you? Corrected you. Loved you. Huh? Uh, oh, look at that. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, there's some people that didn't raise their hands. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. Mm. He said, but they won't receive correction. He said, they won't receive it anymore. Mean that you did at one time. They didn't want to be reproved. There's anger in their hearts, he's saying. There's not, listen, they're not grieving at the preaching of the word when it cuts to the very bone and marrow of their soul. They get offended by the truth. They get offended by the truth. They get offended <laughs> because the condition of their very own heart. I got a question. Yeah, before I go there. Hmm. Nah, I'm going to go there. I got a question. <laughs> How many of y'all would say y'all have the love of God in your heart? The truth. Okay. Well, let's find out. Let's see. Here's a, here's a little quick one out here. All right. Do you find it difficult or a difficult job for you to get to church? I ain't talking about transportation. I ain't talking about transportation. That's, you can't, or you didn't have a car. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm going to ask again. Do you find it difficult to get to church? And you don't look forward to assembling. Listen. And you don't look forward to assembling yourselves together with other believers. Because you got people that, that sit right here. I hope not right here. I'm just talking about in the body. I hope not right here. Mm. Let's watch something. Let's write. Let's, let's go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews 10, 25 and 26. Talking about the truth here. Ooh. Hebrews Ready? chapter 10 at verse 25. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as is the habit of some people, mm. but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. Watch this. As you see the day approaching. It's saying that the closer we are to the coming of our Lord, the more perilous times are happening. It's saying the more important it is for you and I to gather, not stay away. As it's getting darker outside, more violent, all these changes in the atmosphere, the earth, and violence in the earth. He said, we should want to... We should want to get together even that much more. Other than just every other Friday, Sunday, and Tuesday. Y'all yeah. didn't see it. Y'all didn't see it. For second, I'm assembling yourself again, neglecting, assembling yourself together as believers, as in the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see. The day approaching. Mm. Oh, my God. Do we got to come again? Are we here again? We were just here. It's Sunday, now it's Tuesday. See, that's the person I'm talking about. Mm, mm, mm. 
Some people just really get excited about coming together. That's me. I get excited. I just so much. I don't even want to leave y'all. I won't look up because I don't know if I want to look up. Mm -mm. All right. Some people come and they are simply bored. And their hearts are not connected with the spirit. Listen, with the spirit of unity. Good to see you, Shirley. I missed you. I asked people, I said, where, where, where's she at? You did. They, they asked him. I asked him, where's she at? Good to see you. Amen. We had to connect. Listen, that's what I said. Some people are simply bored, and their hearts are not connected with the spirit of unity. That's the spirit of unity. The house, listen, the house of God is, is not alive to them anymore. If you feel, <laughs> if you feel that you are dragging yourself to the ministry or any ministry, if you feel that you're just, <sighs> yes, barely, barely getting here, I'm not talking about transportation. To this ministry. Guess what you've done? You've opened yourself up to the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist. That's against, opposing. I just don't feel like it. See, as the time gets closer, we're supposed to be growing closer together. We should want to. It's the spirit of unity. Because we see that it's dark. And then, now when I go up to you and I say, Maranatha, he's coming. See, you'll know what that means. See, back in the day, they couldn't just say they had to go on. Maranatha. All right. He's coming. See, we're not excited right there. We don't go about that. We, we don't eat. We do this and we walk by people. We don't say, hey, he's coming. Maranatha. And if we too believe, he'd be like, We're not excited. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got to come again. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's what we do. Now you're calling on his name for the wrong reasons. All right. Reason two. If you want to know that your love or God's love is in your heart. Hmm. <laughs> it's when... You hear a sermon. You want to know if you got God in your heart. And when you hear a sermon, and you're reading someone else's name in it, into the message, instead of your own name. Ah, I said, this is a sign that you know that your heart, that you don't have the heart of God. That love for God is not in your heart. It's diminishing. It's when you hear a sermon and you're reading someone else's name into the sermon. Say that. <laughs> Instead of putting your own name in there. See, right now it should be like a domino effect. Just doo -doo -doo -doo. Examine, yourself. Examine yourself. Something wrong in your heart now. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You know y'all be saying, oh my goodness, that's, you be saying, God Almighty, look at that. That's sister so-and-so. Mm-mm-mm. Got to hear the truth. Sister Watermelon. Got to hear the truth. That's a sign. Mm-mm-mm. You be saying, yeah, you do. That word was for her today. Mm -mm -mm. That word was right for them today. Did y'all, you know it is. Mm -mm. See, because you know somebody's business then. 
instead of you praying for them? See, now your love is taking account. No, it's not bearing up enough. And that's a gossiping spirit, too. I told you that was them. Mm, 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 mm. It should be a reminder that, uh uh-uh, it should be a reminder that's you. Mm -mm. (laughs) As Samir would say, sit your darn tail down. (laughs) That's what she would say. Y'all know her, she'll know, she'll say that to you. Mm -mm, Sit your darn tail down. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. How many of y'all have taken this message right now? That I've been teaching on the Antichrist. How many of y'all have taken it into your heart? How many of y'all actually have taken it into your heart? Mm-hmm. How many of y'all are being moved and convicted in your own heart? And in your own thinking? Not nobody else. Mm-mm. I wish it was everybody's hand went up. Mm-mm. You should be saying, God, put that word in my heart. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Number three, this is the one y'all need. When reproof angers you rather than humbling you. It's the truth, though. When reproof angers you rather than humbles you. Go to Proverbs. And I'm in here. Go to Proverbs. <laughs> Y'all know this one coming. Hold on. Go to Proverbs. I'm going to get you on this one. Watch this. Go to Proverbs 1. All right? 29, 31. Come on. Mm-hmm. Proverbs chapter 1 at verse 29. Because they hated knowledge... And did not choose the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Would accept none of my counsel Mm. and despised all my reproof. Mm. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be satiated with their own devices. Mm. (sighs) Hold on. I've heard this before. Y'all might have heard it too. Their own devices. Look at that. Y'all might have heard this since y'all go to walk a ministry. <laughs> Some people say walk a ministry is too harsh. Some of you have been saying it. <laughs> it's too tough. It's too rough. Walk a ministry is too harsh and too rough. That's what they say. That's what I've heard. Little bird whispered in my ear. Some people say walking ministry is too harsh and too rough. This is what teaching I say. You better believe we are. You better believe we are. <laughs> you know why? That's right, because we actually listen. We're like this because we actually hate sin. We actually hate sin. If I didn't hate sin, I wouldn't correct you. If I didn't hate sin, I wouldn't be able to lead you. Listen, we actually do. We hate sin and the devil. And we can see danger of your eternal separation that you don't really care about. Why have a shepherd and a teacher who can't see? That's not that's of no good to you. If I always tell you you're good. You're all right. You don't have to change. You can stay exactly like you are. That's not a good shepherd. That's not a good parent. Wouldn't you agree? That's not one. 
Okay. Because we don't want you to be separated from God or deceived. We want to make sure we see, to let you know we see something that you obviously don't see or choose not to see. That's why God gives you shepherds and teachers. Because Satan has, listen, he has already blinded the sheep of the church. Anytime we could just openly celebrate a pagan holiday, the church is blind. Y'all care about people versus what, what God will is. All right. I've heard some Christians say, I don't want to know. I don't want to know the origin of Christmas. You'll break my tradition. Okay. All right. Mm -mm. I got a question. When I say this ministry, people think we're harsh and it's rough here. I got a question for you. I got, I got to ask you something. So, when you see a person in danger, do you calmly go up to them and say, you know what? I don't mean to disturb you. you, you you're going at a good pace right now. But in about six inches, you're going to fall off a 2,000-foot cliff. So could you kindly come back? Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -mm. This, I'm going to help you with that, right? This is, this is the problem right here. When you talk like that, they don't hear the urgency in your voice. And when you don't talk like that, they won't consider quick enough to change, to take another thought. If you don't say it the way it needs to be said in the emergency, in the danger, then you might as well not say it because they're not going to respond. Okay. Come off the cliff. Come off the cliff. So you're going to hear the urgency of my voice. And it's going to make you think and stop in your tracks before you actually consider. Right. Other than that, you're just going to keep walking. You're just going to keep walking. You, 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 know, you, know, you might want to stop for a few minutes and think about what you're doing. No, you can't do that. You can't do that because they're not going to stop walking. Yes. They're not going to stop and consider the thought. Okay. See, that's what happened. Real quick, go to Proverbs 15.10. See, and if you don't put an urgency on it, they can continue to walk in the same direction. Proverbs 15.10. Proverbs chapter 15 at verse 10. There is severe discipline for him who forsakes God's way, and he who hates reproof will die physically, morally, and spiritually. Oh, y'all should love Walker Ministry. <laughs> I need y'all to get this. I mean, I don't have a heaven and hell to put you in, but because of your disobedience, Read that one more time, because I don't think it got in the back back there. I'm not sure. It stopped somewhere mid, I don't know. Read that again. Proverbs there is, yeah. 15 at verse 10. There is severe discipline. Hold on, I'm going to amplify. There is severe discipline. For him who forsakes God's way. For him who forsakes God's way. And he who hates reproof. And he who hates reproof. Will die. Will die. Uh-uh, stop. You will die. Didn't the Amber tell you how you're going to die? Physically. Physically, morally, and spiritually. Just because you're a hardhead. Just because somebody tells you you're thinking wrong. 
And this is not the way that you should be thinking. You get mad. Offended. I had to close my eyes tight on that one. <laughs> not love. What kind of parent just let their child do what they want to do? Raise you. That's what happens. I could read the word for myself. Yeah, but I read it in my call. So he's not going to talk to me the way he talked to you. That's right. Matter of fact, you're not willing or yielded enough to accept this one. Because you're going to be fearful and want somebody to speak to you the way you want them to speak to you. I told you can't be an active listener. Listen, what happened is most of us are passive listeners. I want to listen to how you said it instead of the way I said it. Listen, what I said. What did I say? I said, danger, you get ready to go off the cliff. You mad because I yelled at you? <laughs> that you were going off the cliff? It's the only way I get your attention. Because you're too hear busy hearing yourself. All right. All right. It's a difference. So, teacher, if we teach the Bible like it really says, we should teach. Few people, few people will love, will love a ministry like this. Amen? Few people. And I need you to stop saying, oh, it can't seem like I can't do nothing right. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is learn from what you've done wrong. Now grow. So you can help someone else. Oh, that's beautiful. Be a leader so you can be led. That's what makes a good leader is that you can be led. Amen. Almost finished here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stop. Hey, listen. All right. <laughs> Few people will love a ministry like this. That's what you told me to put down there. But guess what? It's God's way. So I don't care what man thinks. I'm going to do it God's way. That's why you have a bunch of spirits coming in the church, kundalini, everybody shaking and doing our, mm -mm, mm -mm. Then we got holy laughter, everybody just busting out. You can't hear that demon. No, we're not saying that you can, can't have joy and the Lord can't make you shake, but you need to know the spirit. <laughs> He's not going to have you walking on the ground barking like a dog. That's not God. Clucking like a chicken. That's not God. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. See, we, we, because we're blinded, we don't know what is of God. God is not out of order. He's not unseemly. And we don't know when he's moving. Or well, something's moving you. You could be under the power of the Holy Spirit and still be coherent. And I don't give you a prophecy doing this. That's not, that's not God. I wish I could do my head as fast as they do it. But that's not God. You know why they do this? You see them doing that at the, at the wall, right? You see them doing it, right? You know why they're doing it? No. The, you see them do it, right? Yeah. 
Because if you see, but it's, it's, it's all has to do with catching the spark. If that's Talmudic teaching, this is what they're doing. This is why they do that. They catch the spark. He gets orthodoxy. He didn't know the origin of why you see everything that you see. How many of y'all really up to par on the third temple? If not, I'm going to help teach you and learn, teach you about the third temple. All right, I like that. Don't say it. Well, I'm going to teach you on this. Be careful. Don't just go out now. Just get on the Internet. Please stop that. Let me do my job. Okay. I come out of paganism. I know what it looks like. Okay, here we go. Lost for love of Christ. Oh, teacher. Look at me, stop. <laughs> She's like, don't put it on me right now. I'll get you later. All right. Okay. Y'all hear that? All right, I got a dilemma right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to try to show you. I might not get to be sure all three. Um, I want to show you like three things that... Uh, uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to show you there are more lovers of pleasure. Matter of fact, go here. Go, go here first. Go to 2 Thessalonians. I'm going to help you out before we go in there. I'm going to end here. Go to 2 Thessalonians 2.12. Watch this. Drama. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12. In order that all may be judged and condemned who did not believe in, who refused to adhere to, trust in, and rely on the truth, mm -hmm. but instead took pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay, hold on. But they took pleasure in righteousness. I'm going to show you there's going to be more lovers of pleasure inside the church than outside of the church. Can I show you that? Okay. Go to Second Timothy. Go to 2 Timothy. Ready? 3, 1 through 5. Amplify. 2 Timothy chapter 3. But understand this, hmm. that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, hmm lovers of money, and aroused by an inordinate, greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant, and contemptuous, boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, mm. disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affections, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. Mm. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate, and loose in, moral and, in loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce haters of good. Mm. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures, and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. For although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid all such people. Turn away from them. For among them are those 
Those who worm their way into homes. Stop. Go back. All of that was in here. Not in the world. Paul is telling Timothy, this is what's going to happen in these times. He's talking all those things, blasphemers, haters of truth. All of that is in the church. He's not talking outside. He's talking about right in here. Truth breakers. Oh, y'all missing it. Oh, y'all missing this thing. Oh, my God. Fierce traitors. Hey, go, go back, man, because we're we still missing this. He's not talking about the world. He's talking about believers. Do y'all see that? How did it make you feel? How did, how did it make you feel? He, they will be treacherous, betrayers, rash. Did y'all see this? Self-confident. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures. Vain. Listen at I'm musing. Listen at this. Did y'all see this? More than lovers of God. But they're in here, but they love the world more than they love God. They come to church, but they still love the ways of the world more than they love God. Y'all miss it. Oh, my God. Paul is saying because of the spirit of Antichrist in the last days in the church, they are going to be lovers of, listen, of unrighteousness. That's what he's saying, because the church will no longer love the truth. You see it happening now. And what state are we in as the body of Christ? Or, or, what state are you in as the body of Christ? Y'all, I, I'm going to have to end here because it's, it's getting late. And I don't want to lose you, but I got more. I ain't getting a chance to finish. But I need y'all to get the gist of what is happening here in the last days. Right? He said they're going to be given over lovers of pleasure. And it said more than they love God. That refers to their will. More, listen, that they love him more than the word. They love the things of the world more than they love the word. Maybe we just don't love the word. Do we love the word? I like Paul said, I have kept the faith intact. Integrity of it. Listen to this. Anything that keeps you. Anything that keeps you from enjoying God's love. Anything that keeps you from enjoying God's love. And wanting to do the will of God. Is what's considered the ways of the world. How many of y'all want to do? See, the love of God is not supposed to be kept from you. What's keeping you from the love of God? Your past? What didn't happen to you? What happened to you? The love of God is just trying to reach you. Well, guess how he's going to reach you? Through people. Yeah? He's going to reach you through people. Because I correct you, you, you think I don't like you. No, I love you. Enough to tell you the truth. Amen. Jesus said, as soon as I told them the truth about what they had to do, they left me. Then they walked with me no more. Mm, mm, mm. That's it, y'all. I can keep going, but I got to bring it to an end. So, man, I'm done. Well, glory to God. Yom Teruah. All right. <laughs> it's a good day. Hey, I, I guess he's, he's communicating to me. All right, man. But well, praise God. Y'all good? Y'all enjoy? How y'all learn?
All right. Conviction burning your heart? No spirit of antichrist in here?